So bring you guys down to a different angle on this rifle and how I would potentially shoot this or how I do shoot it. Now, this rifle was custom built by me and no one else. This is a uh, modified Savage Long Action. Uh, it used to be a 300 wind mag, but I modified it, milled out the bolt and everything. So to what needed to be done for the 300 PRC. I was an early adopter of this cartridge. This is a great cartridge, overall for hunting and target. This rifle is mainly set up for target. Now, for me, this is my end all rifle for my 30 cal. Is it the best 30 cal? You know, in my eyes, it really is. I really like this or I would have actually done a Norma. Now we might do a Norma later on the channel to do a lot of testing. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me to do a 300 rum. We might, I still have the original 300 wind mag barrel. We might screw that on and try some 300 wind mag. But the way this rifle is set up right now, this rifle will shoot 1.2 miles with the load data, the scope, the dope, everything I have for it. Now, I wanna go over the pieces on this rifle, on why I did the pieces I did, and why I'm using these. So we're gonna start from the front to the back, and we'll go from there. Now on the front of this, I have a Control Solutions muzzle brake. This is their Gen 2 muzzle brake. This is a self-timing. And this muzzle brake is amazing. This muzzle brake has taken up a majority of my recoil off of this rifle. Now, would I recommend this muzzle brake? Absolutely. Did I buy this muzzle brake? Yes, I did. Now, underneath the, underneath the gun, you see a Accuracy Solutions Bipod XT. Did I use this for my 1.2 mile shot? Yes, I did. All four shooters this that day used this rifle exactly in the same configuration as you see it now. Nothing has been done to this rifle. Do I, am I gonna change anything on this rifle? Probably not. This is the one rifle I'm not gonna do anything to. For the certain fact of the matter is, this rifle works. The Accuracy Solutions Bipod XT, which you guys will see a full review on later down the road, but I'm gonna give you guys a brief description of it. Extends my bipod out to 31 inches. Now, this falls underneath the Archimedes uh, solution for, le for leverage. The further you put something out on this pivot point, the more stable it will be. Now, we did have this extended all the way out to 31 inches that day. We had the bipod legs all the way extended out. Now the bipod you see here is a bipod that was given to the channel by Accuracy Solutions, full, full disclosure, and for test and evaluation. The bipod is an Accutec HD50. Accutec sent out the bipod to me and they provided the, sli the sled feet too. This bipod is probably one of the most rugged bipods I've ever used in my shooting career or in shooting in general. This bipod has an extension all the way up to about 10 and a half to 11 inches. I really like this bipod and I don't think I will switch out this bipod. I'm going to use this bipod on the 33XC project that we are currently working on and I'm also going to use this bipod on any uh, stabilization shots I have to use. So we're gonna go to the barrel next. The barrel was given to the channel by Preferred Barrel Blanks. It is a one and a twist, 5R rifling, 300 PRC, chambered for a Savage small shank. This barrel is 26 inches and has a five by 28 muzzle thread and it is crowned. Uh, Preferred Barrel Blanks does really good uh, pre-fit barrels. I have three of them at this time and all three of them are great, are great shooters. Uh, downfall is, this was when they first opened and one of their very first reamers, the, when the 300 PRC came to be, so I can't use ADG brass, unless I wanna have this sent out or if I wanna modify the brass down 200 thousandths on the neck. But you can use Lapua brass. 
that's a plus. And we do have some of that. We will be doing a load development testing video later down the road. So let's get into the chassis. The chassis is an XLR Evolution chassis. They no longer make this chassis. That sucks. I really like this chassis. It's a really rigid chassis. The chassis is built strong. It's built off of some 6061 aluminum. I have not seen a chassis that beds a savage action as well as this one. But like I said, they discontinued this one last November. I'm trying to find another one of these chassis for a different project right now when I'm having no luck. So back here in the buffer tube area, I have a two pound mercury recoil and dampering system. So along with this and that muzzle brake, this rifle really has almost no felt recoil to it. And with that being said, that's gonna give you more control, more stabilization to stay on target. Up here on the bolt handle, I have the new Anarchy Outdoors bolt handle with the little berth of bolt knob. Now this is titanium. Um, so the titanium do run a little more expensive than the aluminum, but I really wanted the titanium because it matches the silver and black uh, theme I have going on this rifle. The bolt is the original stock bolt from Savage. This runs off of a Magnum bolt face. Now, everything here you see, like I said, I have not modified since I've done this shoot. Back here, I have the new adjustable bag rider from Longshot Precision. This is their new one they just launched for the XLR stock. I'll be doing a full review on this bag rider for, for the channel. This bag rider tremendously helped in doing and stabilizing for that shot along with this bipod xt and having a nice wide stance bipod with wide feet all three of these characteristics on, on that help help make that long range shot um i originally made this rifle to shoot a mile the first summer i had this rifle i was not able to make that mile shot this summer i was able to make it past a mile 1.2 miles do i want to go further yes i do so down the road you guys will be seeing this rifle more on the channel because this is one of my favorite 30 cals and we will be doing more testing so like i said before the action is a savage long action uh small shank and then on top of that i have a worn 20 moa base now up here for the mount I have a worn 20 MOA Mountain Tech base. It's skeletonized for weight reduction, and it's also 20 MOA. So, we're gonna get into the scope. Now the scope is a uh, Element Titan 5 to 25 by 56. I did a full review on this scope. I hope you guys go back and watch the video. I'll put a link up in the description above. Now, with this scope, it has 100 MOA, or 26 and a half mils. That being said, that's a lot of adjustment. Now, if I was just gonna run this on a 20 MOA system and do holdovers, that would give me more than enough for a mile. But I decided I wanted to do the 20 MOA scope base and the 20, 20 MOA scope mount and put 40 MOA of camp back into the scope. That being said, so my rifle sits on roughly about 10 10 to 15 MOA, which is fine with me. That get, that's roughly, for me, about three mils. So I have a full total adjustment in the scope of 23.7 mils. So when we did the 1.2 mile shot with this, I was at 19 mils of adjustment and I held for one mil of wind. We were running roughly about a five mile per hour, five mile per hour wind down that, down that area. So why did I do it with this scope? A lot of people would be asking me, why am I not using a two, three, four thousand dollar scope to do a one mile shot? Well, I wanted to prove that you could do this with a seven, eight hundred dollar scope. And when Element heard about it, they were saying, let's do it. So this is my rifle. Oh, let me get to the grip. The grip is an Ergo grip. It is their uh, sniper platform with the lower bevel, which is really nice because I like, so I can keep my palm here 
I can have it up on the side. Now I thought about putting a thumb rest, but I, I like the sleek design of this. Or I can come in here comfortably and do it. Now the trigger, it's a standard Accutech trigger, but it's modified. It's modified with the Accutech target spring. That being said, I have this trigger tuned and I have it set as a two-stage system to break about one, one and a quarter pounds, which is right where I'm comfortable with a nice two-stage trigger. The first stage has just takes up that little blade. The second stage breaks it. The bolt, now the bolt has been modified too with a bolt lift kit I bought off of another YouTuber and you can buy his bolt lift kit on on ebay if you go and look for savage bolt lift kit so made the bolt lift kit nice and smooth especially for being this magazine fed and having to modify this it worked out quite well so um standard back, butt pad on the back but like you guys see my whole reasoning for this build was to build a newer version of the PSG-1. Getting those imported and the cost of those things are damn near um, expensive. So, I really wanted to build my own and build it with a bigger 30 cal that I knew would get out there. And this is more of that modern day sniper platform I was looking for that I would like to run at some sniper competitions. I just have to find a way to re reduce some of the weight in this so it's a little bit easier to carry because the way this rifle is configured right now this is about 17 and a half almost 18 pounds so we'll figure that out later down the road or we might build a lightweight 300 prc on the channel we'll have to see but i really like this rifle i love this rifle it's one of the very first bolt actions i've ever built for the channel and i have achieved everything i wanted to do with it now I'm going to set some new goals with it now that we have new brass, uh, more projectiles and powder. So we're going to see how much further we can get this out. Well guys, thank you for joining, thank you for watching, and hey, make small groups, have fun with it. I'll catch you guys on the next video.